Here we have the blanks for the planters that I'm making and hoping to make for Mother's Day. Um, these are based on the plans from David uh, Picuto, 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 I'm going to say Picuto, uh, the drunken woodworker. Really nice guy, runs a great site, has great weekly woodworking wrap-up videos. Here's, a, here's the plan that he has free on his website for them. He's got a great video about how to make these. Um, so I saw the video, I said, you know what, that's a really cute little thing that I could make a couple of. I didn't shoot the first day, which was just gluing up these slabs. And these are roughly four inches by four inch squares of various different woods I had. In his video, David talks about first um, cutting it square on the bandsaw and then cutting the shape out in the bandsaw. While I agree that the bandsaw is a great way to do it and I would do it with my bandsaw if my bandsaw was up and running, choosing to do it a different way. I'm making them on the miter saw. And you may say to yourself, but how? The miter saw is no replacement for the bandsaw. And with that, I'll probably normally agree. However, in the case of these blocks, there's one that I've done. Here's the next one. What we have, this really accentuates it, is a flat surface on the top, a flat surface on the bottom, and very rough edges where they were glued up, not perfectly square. So what I can do is because they're very small blocks and the capacity of the saw is a bit bigger than that, is I could take them with the flat top, push the flat top against the fence, and clamp it tightly against the fence. Now, with the bottom edge being slightly uneven, as you can see, still in this one, and why don't I take the one I just did off and put that there. If I hold it tight, there's a slight bit of rock there, but I can clamp it tight here and have it resting solidly along this edge, and I think that's nice and tight. And then, if I had it lined up properly, so it's out here, I bring the blade down and I cut a perfectly straight line on this edge. From that point, I put that flat edge down, keep it flat and push it in, clamp it again. Now in this case I'm using a clamp in this direction to clamp it tight to the fence because my reference surface is on the top, which in this case is pointing towards the back. I have this hold down here, and this could work once I get the first side tight, because then they'll be pushing down against that first flat side I cut. But initially, because that is far from a flat side, if I put it down like this, I'm not necessarily going to get a side that is at a right angle to this back face. So that's the way I'm going. I'll set this one up and show you. What it results in is sides like this that are right off the saw. In the light, you can kind of see the saw marks, but there's no burning. They're very clean and with a little sanding should be fine. Now There we have it. Four nice perpendicular sides to the top and the back. Um, as the boards are all milled flat, the top and the back are parallel, and the four sides are all at 90 degrees to the top, which will make a 90 degrees to the bottom also. So now we're ready for the next phase. What I'm going to do now is cut the angles on them, because I'm going to make them all versions of this planter where they have that slight angle from the top to the bottom. Now, as David says, create your own pattern. The actual angle doesn't really matter. I mean, it needs to look good. It doesn't really matter what it is. So I've taken my bevel here and just basically lined it up with this template. So what I'll do next is take that and put it on the, on the block. And then I can draw those lines back. Just cut this first one on the saw. Came out pretty well. So here are all five, cut with the bevel. The actual degree, as I said, and David says, does not matter, just do it, do it looks good. What I've just done is taken my, uh, my that 
tool on the right. Combo square? I'm completely drawing a blank as to what you call that wonderful thing. Um, quite frankly, I rarely use mine. I typically use the, the little square ones much more often than the this one that does the 45s. But just excuse my, my brain fart about what these things are called. And I set them to the corner and I made X's. So I don't know that they're absolutely perfect because these things are not absolutely perfectly square, but they're pretty darn close. So I taped the top that's in the attempt to stop tear out when I drill through them and I marked these X's that show the center so now I'm going to start drilling them out Here are the planters. They've all been sanded. I uh, started with 80 grit and worked my way up to 180. And I've epoxied the inside of all of them. So you can see the epoxy there down at the bottom. I used a five minute epoxy. And it dawned on me, that's a cup. I mixed right inside the planter and seemed to work just fine. I was able to take the nozzle. You see I used those, the Dev, Devcon I think it is. It's just a generic home store brand. Um, epoxy. I'd stick the nozzle right in, squeeze some out. Next one, I kind of eyeballed making it equal. I think the mix is okay. And uh, it was nice and neat. What I would do is squeeze it in, use a toothpick to stir it, and then use an acid brush to brush it around. And a little bit of rotating, a little bit of brushing. It stuck to the sides better than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be a nightmare to stick it to the sides. And uh, I don't know how well this captures it. You can kind of see the gloss there on the sides, though they all look just dark. Um, there the the maple kind of shows because it's a lighter wood and it seems to have stuck just fine and I brushed up I got very little on the surface all I need to do is lacquer them and put some plants in and we'll be good to go And here the planters are finished. Um, I went through and sorted them with the kids. Those three will be from the kids, the matching ones from the twins, the, uh, the maple, and walnut one from Wes. And these two will be from me. A couple comments now having finished it is I made the holes as deep as the plunge depth of my drill press. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say that's probably about two inches, but I'm not sure. I would make them deeper. Uh, it's a little tricky to get it lined up as you rotate the table down and then or rotate the table up rather and drill again, but I would settle for a slightly uneven hole to make them a little bit deeper because they were kind of tight. Uh, another thing I would do is I made them the two inch diameter, which is the smaller of the two diameters in the plans. The ones in the plans, one was two inches, one was two and a half. I would probably go for either two and a quarter or two and a half. The two is just a little bit too narrow um, on final reckling of putting the plants in. Um, I think I would go with a slightly bigger hole. That being said, I managed to get them to work. I think these are going to be perfect and um, very nice, very nice Mother's Day present. So, David, thank you for publishing these and uh, letting everybody build along. Thanks. <laughs>